In this follow-up video, I want to show you how to use the real-valued Fourier transformation, the RFFT, in two dimensions to continue with the example of taking spectral derivatives. With it, we can save about half of the computation in comparison to the classical Fourier transformation. Let's get started. The channel sponsor Pasteur Labs is currently hiring SIML and software engineering positions. Check out pasteurlabs.ai slash careers for more details. Hi and welcome to this new video. The RFFT is a modification of the classical FFT if we have a real valued input. So for instance, if our function that we want to differentiate returns a real value, we can easily use the RFFT and then save about half of the computation because the classical FFT assumes that it operates on complex signals. So we save about half of the information there by not considering the imaginary part. If you watch the 1D video on the RFFT, you notice that using it is kind of straightforward. When it comes to 2D, it gets a bit more tricky, as we will see in a second. Let me first recap what we did in the previous video with the spectral derivative in 2D. So we used NumPy and Matplotlib, then we assumed an unit square domain that goes from 0 to L and we also set L to 1 and discretized with 100 degrees of freedom in each direction. Then we created a mesh which we used to discretize the original function as well as its two analytical derivatives. And then with a handy helper function we were able to plot it both the original function and the gradient consisting of the partial derivative in x0 direction and in x1 direction. Then in order to perform the spectral derivative we had to compute the wave number grid. So we first set up the wave numbers in one dimension using the handy FFT frequency function and scaled them accordingly to the domain. And then with the NumPy mesh grid function, we were able to get our 2D mesh and then stack them together. And I just want to quickly recall the shape here. So wave numbers had the shape of 2 by 100 by 100. So it's a 100 by 100 dimensional mesh. And then at each point, we have two coordinate values. Similar to the original space where we have an X and Y, we have an KX and a KY. Out of the wave numbers, we were able to get the derivative operator by multiplying it with 1j. And then essentially taking the spectral derivative amounts to first transforming the signal fh to Fourier space using the FFT2, so the two-dimensional FFT, and then multiplying it with the derivative operator. Here we indexed at zero to get the derivative with respect to x0. Then we applied the inverse Fourier transformation also with the two to indicate two dimensions. And then since there's a small negligible amount of imaginary components due to rounding errors, we just discarded them by applying dot real. And then ultimately we saw both qualitatively as well as numerically that these two values are kind of similar. Okay, so now we want to use the real valued Fourier transformation. For this I want to go down and first check what the real valued Fourier transformation does if we just apply it purely to our input signal. So let's do numpy.fft.rfft2 for the two-dimensional real valued Fourier transformation and then apply it to fh. So this gives us back a 2-axis array with a lot of complex entries, but I'm mostly interested in its shape. And if we look at its shape, we see it's 100 by 51. Let us compare this with the classical Fourier transformation. NP.FFT.FFT2, so the one we used so far, FH.shape, we see this one is 100 by 100 dimensional. I already mentioned that the savings in compute come from the fact that we discard about half of the Fourier components, and this is also noticeable here. So whenever we apply the real valued Fourier transformation also in higher dimensions with NP.FFT.RFFTN, what we always get is that we have a couple of leading axes whose shape does not change in comparison to the state space signal, and then the very last axis changes. Of course, with the correct command, we can also make a different axis change, but the important fact is that it's only one axis that changes. This also needs to be accounted for in the wave numbers. In order to see why this is the case, let's take the spectral derivative naively. So let's use numpy.fft.irfft2 and apply it to the derivative operator indexed at zero, multiplied with numpy.fft.irfft2 
RFFT2 applied to FH. And if we do exactly that, we get an error and that the operands could not be broadcast together. So there is talking about these two operands. So the derivative operator, which we created with the classical Fourier transformation in mind, so having 100 by 100, and then the result from the real-valued Fourier transformation, which you just saw had the shape 100 by 51. And if you recall from the 1D video that the RFFT actually does not exactly know what the return shape of the inverse Fourier transformation is, we should always identify that and give it um, as an additional argument with S. And in 1D, we just had it to provide the number of degrees of freedom in state space. Here we have to give it the shape, so it should be 100 by 100. But here, of course, that does not matter because there is an error that's already thrown before the inverse Fourier transformation can act. Okay, how can we get rid of this? For this, let's go up and modify the wave number creation. So now we need to account for two kinds of wave numbers, both the wave numbers that are related to the full Fourier transformation and the one to the real Fourier transformation. For this, let me rename wave numbers 1D with wave numbers 1D full and also create wave numbers 1D real with np.fft.rfft frequency on n with spacing d being 1 divided by n and then multiply to account for the size of the domain with 2 times numpy.py divided by l. Then we also need to stack them together and here we have to be careful because in the original video we used the default xy stacking that we also have in our mesh creation. So in order to do correctly here, we need to first plug in the real and then the full. So real and full. And now they are stacked together and let's look at their shape. And here we see now we reduced the shape of the last axis by approximately half. To be precise, the shape that we're expecting is n integer divided by 2 plus 1. So let me write this down. So expected shape is 2 n and then n integer divided by 2 plus 1. Okay, then of course the derivative operator is just straightforward, multiplying this with the imaginary unit. Now that of course will throw an error because we still use the classical Fourier transformation. So let's swap that out. Real Fourier transformation and IRFFT2. And then, of course, let's inform with the shape as being n by n. Because since we do this integer divide by 2 plus 1, or this is kind of the idea of how we discard half the information, there are actually two n's that are associated with each axis length in the Fourier dimension. So we need to inform that. I mean, this takes one more line with the IRFFT call, but as a bonus, we can then remove the dot real because the return of the IRFFT will always be a real array. And as such, we don't need to discard the complex part anymore. So let's shift enter that. And then if we do a shift enter on the plot contour row, we see that we again get the same plot. And also if we compare the numeric values, we see that they are again in the machine precision range. And as such, we see that we also compute the correct derivative value. And so it does not matter if we use the real or the classical FFT. Okay, then we can delete all of that what is down here to not clutter the point. And I just wanted to highlight, so similar to the original video, we could also do the derivative with respect to x1 by just replacing that, or we could also take the gradient. This channel is supported by Pasteur Labs and the Institute for Simulation Intelligence. Click the link in the video description to find out more how they merge machine learning and simulation in order to reimagine the scientific method. Also, a big thanks to all my Patreons. If you also want to support my vision of free education on advanced mathematical topics, you find the link to the Patreon page down in the video description. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, then please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. There is more content on pseudospectral, spectral methods, FFT and derivatives. Here you will now see similar videos and I hope to see you in one of the next videos.